Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is uh, another one of our VR tutorials where we try to figure out how to make uh, Unity and Android work together. If I had an iOS account and an iOS device, then I guarantee you uh, we would be doing that instead. But uh, that doesn't mean that we can't do this. So uh, stick around because today uh, we are going to figure out how to get an animation to move uh, based on where you look. So, for example, uh, we are going to look over at this object here, and it will light up. Uh, it'll turn a different color, because in the last video, uh, we discovered how exactly to do that. And uh, if you want to check that out, go check that out. Uh, but we're going to be building on that video today, and instead of just having this thing change color, we actually want it to animate the camera moving from one position to the other, either up or down or, eh, you know, wherever. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, the first thing that we want to do is uh, create a couple objects so that we have a scene of reference, so that we know kind of uh, what to expect out of things. So let's pretend that this object here is just some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of uh, menu, okay? some sort of menu that uh, you'd see uh, in the middle of a game for whatever reason. And let's say that uh, our, our uh, sphere here, Pepito, as we call him, uh, let's say that that sphere is a button that would allow us to look at something in a different menu, but in the same area. You know, so you could really use this, uh, you know, to activate any sort of script. It doesn't have to be you know, for menu building or whatever, but uh, we want to be able to, you know, pretend like this is uh, some sort of menu here, and that's some sort of button, and then when we click on that button, it's going to take us somewhere else. Uh, so it would be good for triggering uh, uh, cutscenes, so if you want to do some sort of cutscene where the camera moves on its own, this is exactly what you're looking for. So that uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue. So I want to call this one menu. All right, and I'm going to duplicate it and call this one, um, you know, other menu. Okay, it doesn't really matter what you call them. Um, I am going to give them some new materials. So let's go ahead and call this one a menu, and we'll make another one. Do do do, menu two. Or, actually, we'll keep with the other menu. Other menu. Okay, so we're going to color other menu, something bright. There we go, that's perfect. Um, doesn't need to be emissive. We don't need to get all crazy here. Um, and then menu. That one is going to be... Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and grab other menu, because as you see, it was a duplicate. There we go. We want to move that down. That's good. Just so that it's out of <clears throat> out of range of the camera. Uh, so okay. So we're gonna give menu uh, the menu script or the menu <laughs> the menu material, and we're gonna give other menu the other menu material. Excellent. All right. So now it's time to set up the actual animation itself. Click on player. Uh, this is the object that holds your camera, so it's basically just a dummy object. If you don't know how to make a dummy object, just right-click and click Create Empty. And that thing will basically, it's its invisible, it does nothing, it, it literally is just a way for you to contain other objects under the same banner, I guess, as you will. So this is a parent object, and then anything underneath it would be children, so like player is the parent, uh, main camera is the child of player, and GVR reticle pointer is the child of main camera. Main camera is the parent of GVR reticle pointer. Pretty basic. So that's how that's how hierarchy works. Okay, so uh, we are going to take this uh, camera, and we are going to animate it moving down to here, which is our other menu, right? Okay, that's good. So let's go ahead and put our, our camera back where it started. Um, <laughs> hit Control Z so uh, you know it doesn't uh, get all wonky on you. You don't need that. All right, so we've got our we've got our object selected, 
go down here to animation. So if you can't, if you don't have animation open already, go to window and then hit animation, and that's what you'll what you'll need. Okay. To begin animating player, create an animation clip. So create, excellent. And we're going to call this um, Descent. If I. <laughs> Decentify. We are engaging in decentification, and not sent sent, but you know, descent. Aha! All right. So now that we have an animation uh, area, let's go ahead and add a property. So uh, we want to add position. Okay, because we're only changing its position. So you can use your mouse wheel. Okay, scroll it back and forth, and it will shrink your timeline down. What we want to do is at least shrink it down to where you can start seeing these. Uh, when you start seeing it like this, that means that they are actual seconds. You know, that's uh, 1 30th of a second, not 30 seconds. All right, so go ahead and grab this one, the far end, and drag it out to about 3 seconds. Doesn't really matter, you know, what the details are. <clears throat> it doesn't, um, yeah, you don't have to be super specific. Okay, so hit uh, record. All right, right now we don't have anything moving. So come over here to where it says go to next keyframe. That's this button right here. Click that. And now our, uh, you know, our timeline is over here uh, and we want to move the camera. So let's go ahead and move it. Now this will only work if you see that uh, record thing light it up. Okay. You have to light up your record button. You have to be recording in order to make changes. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, a nice simple transition. We're not going to make a go back button. I don't think that uh, is quite necessary. But we do want to make a button, you know, to we we do want to make a way to see the other other screen. Okay, uh, not other screen, but other menu. All right, so we have an animator and it is attached to our player. Let's go ahead and click on this. Um, huh. well, I guess we don't need that one. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, what we want to do is we want to open up our animator window. That's not the animation window, but the animator window. Okay. Now, right now, it won't let us actually access that, so what we will do to get around that is go ahead and hit the play button and then it'll automatically take us to what is playing. Excellent. Okay, so we were able to get in there. Um, now you're going to say to yourself, self, didn't that just start looping all over? Yes, it did. It started without being asked and it loops. So let's, let's end this looping problem once and for all. Go to the Centify because we are engaging in decentification, and you click loop time. Now, you will notice that while it begins without being asked, it is no longer looping. That's good. That's a good start. Now, I want you to do something wild and crazy. Delete. What? Yeah, no, you didn't delete it. You didn't delete it. Go to uh, right click, click create state, and then click empty. Okay? And we're going to call this one waiting for ever. Yes, it, it could be whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Okay, so, oh my gosh. Okay, it's just waiting. It's just waiting. Okay, now, you see this over here? This is the actual action of the camera being moved. Okay, so we would need to actually highlight this. <clears throat> and go play with the animator. But anyhow, uh, let's go ahead and drag Decentify over here. Boom. Okay. You want this here because you don't want this thing to just start playing automatically. We want, to wa we want to find a way to make this play when we want it to. Okay? So your ability to descend is still there. It's still here. It's just not automatically... <clears throat> it's not automatically active when you begin your program, okay? Because it's just waiting. Exactly. All right, so what we need now is uh, to go into scripts. So let's take a look at the player here. We have an animator, and 
what we need is a new script. So let's create a C sharp script and we're going to call it Descendify. Yes, there we go. Descendify. And as you can see, we changed the spelling on it so that we could tell it apart. But it's not really important uh, because you can name it whatever you want. All right, so here we are. Let me, uh, you know what? Where's my, can I drag this down a little? I don't want to get rid of it. I just kind of don't want it right in my face. Here, like that. But, ah, oh, there we go. Yes, all right, sweet. Now I can zoom in and we can see what's going on here. Okay, maybe not that close. All right, what we need here is we need a we need obviously a variable to uh, to work with so we're gonna go let's see public uh, animator or should it be animation probably uh, no I think it's animator yeah let's go animator and we're gonna we're gonna call it d sendo no, we're just going to call it uh, anim for animation. We're going to call it anime, okay? Because I don't like it when people call things A N I M, and I'm all like, "Is that uh, is that necessary? Do you, is that short for something?" And it really throws me off. So uh, let's make a let's make a uh, let's load this animator, okay? So we went anime equals get component. Excellent. And what component are we trying to get? We're trying to get an animator. Excellent. And then we hit our parenthesis and we hit our ender semicolon, as it were. Now, um, now that we've loaded our our public animator with an actual animator animation. Um, Maybe it should be animation. Anyway, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It can't be impossible. Anime uh, dot play, and then we are going to choose the name of our animation. So obviously, this is not the animation we're talking about. We are talking about decentify. Yes, because we chose a a terrible spelling of this copy excellent and let's go back and uh, we're just gonna have to live with that terrible spelling so go ahead and control V there we go and we can semicolon out of that so looks like everything's okay we might need to change this to animation I'm not positive but uh, we will find out okay so what is our action item as you remember it's Pepito our, our friendly neighborhood sphere that we look at. So Pepito, as you may remember, has a pro, uh, has an event trigger that gives us access to all sorts of cool stuff. What we want to do is we want to take this uh, animation and we want to drag Descendify onto it. Okay, so now Descendify is there and if Descendify is active. Let's see, it should automatically kick in. And it should maybe it's animator. Let's check that out. Or animation. There we go. Save. Uh oh. Maybe it was animator. Oh well. Alright, and save. Close that. Uh anyhow, theoretically if it's if it's open, it should trigger the event so hmm odd. oh there we go animator player all right so let's hit play and it should play automatically yes okay now if we uncheck this theoretically it should not play see all right yeah it's nice all right that means we're on the right track okay so find your pepito all right he's our he's our event trigger he's our button Pepito the Strong. Okay, here we go. Let's go down to the event trigger and look at what we have here. So we have 
a pointer enter and a pointer exit. So the pointer enter is for when your when your cursor or your reticle enters the area that the button is in, and your pointer exit is for when it exits out. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to attach this anim or this script right here. We want to make this script right here become active when we take our reticle out of here. Okay, and like I said, that could be for all sorts of reasons, but what we're doing right now is just to move it to a different area. So you can use this for, you know, cutscenes, you can use it to activate birds flying out of the trees or something, I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Okay, so all right, let's let's check this out real quick. So earlier we used Pepito and we accessed the rose colored script. Uh, rose colored changes script, this one right here, and we were able to make all sorts of changes, you know, like uh, pay attention to whether it's watching it or whether you're not looking at it, and that is what changes our colors back and forth. So we added a new condition, and we don't want to worry about Pepito this time. Pepito's doing his job on his own. We want to worry about the player. So click on player, come to no function, because we're going to choose one. And now we can access that script that we just created. Okay, Descendify. Now, right up here, we have this thing called Bool Enabled. Go ahead and click that. And I'm not sure if I need to click this, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. I seem to remember having done that in the past. So let's go ahead and hit play. And let's look at our object. It has changed color as we knew it would. Now we're going to move out of that object, changes back, and it activates the animation. So there you go. You have an animation to get you from one area to the next, or to just move an object anywhere it needs to go. So uh, this, your animator, is really handy in that effect because you don't really wind up having to program a lot of stuff. You just make really simple you know, scripts like this that activate, <laughs> you know, the animations that you do. So this is a really simple way of acting, uh, activating your animations. I hope you guys find it handy. If you do, please give me a like and subscribe. And uh, if you're like Rich, totally check out my Patreon because I'm poverty. But that's neither here nor there, okay? We are having fun in virtual reality and we are going to learn a whole lot of cool stuff. In the next video, I want to... Uh, either get into the wait to click, you know, or maybe the, uh, I think maybe changing scenes would be a good one. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave some comments in the, uh, in the comment area and let me know whether you guys want to see one about, uh, click to wait, you know, or wait to click, you know, so instead of, um, so basically the way that wait to click would be is you would find a button like this and you would hover over it. And instead of activating the script when your mouse goes out of it, the script is actually activated when you have hovered over the button for a certain amount of time. Okay? And we can make a little radial thing that, you know, counts down uh, your activity. Okay? So to let you know how long you've been waiting and then you know, other stuff. So let me know what you guys want. I am more than happy to do both, um, but I, I might stick with the scene tomorrow. The scene might be fun. Okay, so switching scenes. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful night. Um, you know, all that, like, like, subscribe, and all that other stuff. So I, <laughs> I will see you in the next video. See you guys later.